Good, good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Daily Mag Dump, your only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local level. One of the last morning shows before we switch to evenings starting in January, but never mind that. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. And to my fellow Catholics, I hope you're still enjoying Christmas Tide. We celebrate at a minimum to the Epiphany. And then if you're uh, really hardcore, you're going to go all the way to. Um, all the way to Candlemas. So either way, Merry Christmas. Uh, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful time hanging out with your families and, and so forth. I got three stories for you this morning to uh, kind of give you an update. There's just three things I'm taking a look at that I think are good to note uh, between this period where news goes to die between Christmas and New Year's. Um, but first one looks like the NYPD wants to put numbers on ghost guns. Very interesting. We're going to explore that a little bit more. Secondly, Looks like South Carolina wants to get rid of, or at least they're exploring the possibility of, getting rid of a tax on bullets. This is the way to go, especially as the feds have been always discussing putting in a federal excess or almost like a sin tax on bullets. It's good to see states discuss the fact that, well, why don't we just get rid of that as well? And then finally, uh, the McCluskeys, Mike McCluskey of St. Louis fame, uh, continuing to try to get his guns back. And I keep telling people when they're buying firearms, one of the things that they need to look into when they purchase a firearm is, are you willing to lose said firearm if you use it in a self-defense situation? And people always look at me like I'm kind of crazy when I talk about that. But the fact of the matter is, if you use a firearm in self-defense, most likely you're not getting it back. Uh, and this case with the McCluskeys proves that as well. Um, won't get a, they, uh, McCluskey's not going to get his guns back according to an appeals court. So we'll take a look at that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the daily mag dump. I hope everybody's having a great time. Like subscribe, share. Most of you guys aren't subscribed, but that's cool. But uh, as the great Matthew McConaughey said, it'd be a lot cooler if you did, um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're up to either in the description, uh, in the comment section down below, or if you'd like to leave me one right now, um, let me know what you're up to. And uh, are you uh, with family, with friends? How are you celebrating? Let me know. Either way, it's a good day. It is the 27th of December as we are getting out. Oh, look at this. Our, our good friend Carbon Mike is joining us. A uh, little secret. We are actually going to be speaking with Carbon Mike very soon. So I'm very anxious. To, I'm very excited. Not anxious. Very excited to have Carbon Mike jump on with me very soon. Stay tuned for that. Merry Christmas to you as well, sir. Good to have you hang out with me this morning. 27th of December. It's Wednesday. It's 2023. 2023 is running out the door, folks. But that's all right. There's still work to do. So let's get to work. <laughs> All right, good, good morning to you. You probably know what the story is. There it is. First story of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to it. Eh, I like that one. Better. So, from the great bearingarms.com and the amazing Tom Knighton, New York Police Department, or the NYPD, as some people like to call it, wants to put numbers to ghost guns seized. So, over the last few years, we've seen countless reports about how awful ghost guns and the issue has become. Usually they lack any kind of context at all and are presented in a way we can't discern anything at all other than they're scary and that, you know, people apparently can make them in their basement with a cannon printer because our adversaries have one goal and that is to make everything regarding guns as much of a gray area as possible. And the crazy thing is with ghost guns is they want you to think of the kits you can buy right? The little pistol, you know, the frames you can buy and things like that. Or maybe the, the couple people that are the 3D printing them at their house. Um, when they did something very sneaky, what they did is they put something out there where they said, hey, if we're at a crime scene and we find a Glock or a Beretta or a Canic and the serial number is scraped off, yeah, that's a ghost gun too. What does that do? That's bump, that bumps those numbers up. So that way they can say, we've found XYZ number of ghost guns. And, and of course, 
your people who do not exist within the gun world, right? Within the gun community and the day-to-day things or people who are not terminally, terminally online or people who are not terminally within the legal sphere of guns are like, wow, that's a lot of ghost guns. And people are just, they're just putting them together at their house. And of course you have wine moms demand action, screaming about the fact that you could just put a gun together, blah, blah, blah. And then they make it think like you can put together a bazooka at your house. Um, which by the way, would be totally constitutional because the framers, you know, if you want to go by Bruin, the second amendment says all gun con- control needs to be around that or any laws. There wasn't any laws against making guns in your house back then. Just same. Back into the article. But if we're going to evaluate whether something is an issue or not, we need more than that, Tom writes. We need more than just four times more than last year or something equally nebulous. But the, they love operating in that gray area. Never forget that because that is more control on you. If they put numbers down, it always blows their argument. Just like they say, well, a good guy with a gun is a fantasy. And then we're like, well, look at these defensive gun statistics. And then they can't say anything else. Defensive gun statistics are so powerful that wine moms demand action and all the mini Bloomberg groups pushed on the CDC to prevent them or to make them not include them in statistic in gun statistics every year to inflate the, the number to make it more scary. So statistics don't work for leftists, but we know that already. That's kind of a it's kind of a built-in thing. Uh, Tom writes, we need hard numbers. In New York City, the NYPD just gave us a glimpse of the scope of the issue, and they gave us actual numbers. The NYPD has seized 389 untraceable ghost guns. Now remember, an untraceable ghost gun is a gun that does not have a serial number on it. What does that mean? It means it could be a gun that was stolen from somebody else, so a theft already took place, a law was already broken, and then they scratched off the serial number on a gun that was already put through an FFL, which is another violation of the law. So, of course, what's something that we're seeing here? Multiple laws are being broken before it is used in a crime. See, the fact of the matter is, they want to talk about layer, you know, they want to talk about new laws, regulate this, regulate that. All we're doing is a sandwich effect. Right. We have this law. We have that law. We're going to sandwich another law on top of another one. So, you know, we'll just throw another law on there. Well, what the heck? Well, let's go. What the hell? None of these laws prevented the theft. They didn't prevent the illegal scraping of the number off. They didn't prevent any of it. So what's this extra law going to do? Nothing. Anyway, that's a 710 percent surge in such seizures since 2019 when a mere 48 were taken in 2022 a record high 463 of these deadly firearms which is a contradiction because all firearms are deadly were recovered it's distressing to see that many ghost guns recovered by police and mark collins federal policy director of the gun control group brady said they are perfect guns for crimes if you want a prohibited person if you are a prohibited person you want to get a gun and you don't want people to know you have a gun then these guns are for you I ever seen somebody work so hard to say so little. That's all these people do. Oh, if you want to get a gun, you're going to get a gun. And if you can't get a gun, you're going to get a gun. Buddy, what are you saying? Anyway, now maybe it's just me, but 389 guns doesn't sound like a big deal, especially high number of ghost guns in a city. What's it? Last time I checked, New York has like 6 million people in it. So 389 ghost guns in a city of 6 million people, which is the Big Apple. Hmm relatively speaking, that's not that bad. I mean, it's a, it's a city with a population more than Denmark, Finland, Slovakia, and a pile of other nations, which he's correct. Well, we lack those, a total number of guns recovered by police. It, it seems there's a pathological inability for reporters to actually ask a question when they're talking to law enforcement. Yeah, because they've been told, first of all, you're in New York City, which means nobody cares, right? They just want guns to be gone. You know, you have Governor Hateful Kate, who's running things up there and they want you to be disarmed and dependent. So they're not going to ask these follow-up questions because it's not within their interest to do so. So in a report from the first part of June, the NYPD claimed it recovered more than 2,100 guns at that point of the year. If all the quote unquote ghost guns were part of that number, it would account for nearly 19% of the guns. That would be a lot. While it's not a guarantee that those numbers would uh, extrapolate out for the entire year, some months might be less 
of an issue than others. After all, if we double that 2100 gun number, we get some frame of reference. We'd find that quote unquote ghost guns account for less than 10% of the total guns recovered by the NYPD. Sure, it's a bigger thing than it was in 2019, but it's still not nearly as big of an issue as people like the Brady group uh, want you to believe. If these guns were quote unquote perfect for crime, why isn't every single person using it? Why aren't all the criminals using it? Well, it's very simple because they are not telling you the truth. They're just trying to scare you into compliance. The truth of the matter is that criminals got nearly 4,000 guns more really because those numbers are only what the police recovered in 2023. Just fine. Despite all the current gun control laws on the books, ghost guns are far from the only way prohibited people can get a firearm in spite of the law. And anyone with a lick of sense knows it. Let's not forget that at least some of these quote unquote ghost guns are probably traditional guns with the serial number has been removed as Rick Barrett has been saying. So now Tom's unconvinced that this is some tremendous scourge in our society. But we're actually starting to see as the end of the year comes out, we get these lists and we get these numbers and we get these final reports and these things like that. It's important because as we go into 2024 election season and as we start to see Kamala La and Joey B and the Biden regime push on states to do certain regulations. We talked about that before Christmas where they're actually forcing these states, blue states, they're putting the, they're, they're pulling on them to enact all the gun control they couldn't pass at the federal level. These statistics, these nebulous statistics will be floated out there. Oh, well, you know, ghost guns are scary. Look, the, the NYPD, you know what they like to do? 710% more than last year. What is seven? What does that mean? Most people are bad at math thanks to Common Core, so they, they just think, wow, that's a large number. And it does exactly what the left wants. It scares you into compliance. So it's good to take a look at these things because we have to understand that it's all just lies. All just damn lies. Good gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Daily Mag Dump, your only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local level. I'm your host, Rick Barrett, the Armed Catholic. You can find me at thearmcatholic.com. First class firearm training with the foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. Carbon Mike jumping in here. It's also worth noting that no serial number is required to perform a ballistic match between a projectile and a recovered weapon. More gun control hysteria. If you all don't, if you're all on Twitter, follow Carbon Mike because the guy is legit. Like I said, I can't wait to talk to him because he's, uh, he's a pretty awesome dude. All right. Um, thank you, Carbon Mike. Because that's actually very correct. Second story of the day. Let's get you guys so you can actually read this. Uh, ba, 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 ba. There we go. So, second story of the day coming to us from the AOL.com. Because even in 2023 into 2024, AOL is still a thing. No tax on bullets. Why one South Carolina lawmaker wants to eliminate sales tax for some ammunition. This is by Annie Wilder. Let's see how Anna, now I don't know why I said Annie, get your gun. Anna Wilder. Let's see how Anna takes a look at this. I guarantee you it's going to be completely and total gun control-ish. If you're a South Carolina gun owner, there's a chance you could be able to buy ammunition without sales tax in the future if a new proposal come, becomes law. Sales representative Ashley Trannon of Greenville just filed a bill ahead of the legislative session that begins in January that would eliminate sales tax on small arms ammunition. This would include ammunition for any quote unquote portable firearm. I like how they, I, I do love lawyers speak. I do love it. Any po portable, portable firearm, which includes rifles, shotguns, pistols, and revolvers with no barrel greater than an internal diameter of 50 calibers or a shotgun of 10 gauge or smaller. I'm, I can dig all that. Small arms ammunition is normally what gun owners keep in a purse by their bedside or in their vehicle, Tranum said. Um, small arms, I don't keep a I don't keep a box of nine mil by my bed. <laughs> I, I, I keep it in the gun by my bed. That's a weird sentence. Small arms ammunition is normally what gun owners keep in a purse by their bedside or in their vehicle. I think I I, I think I'm taking it away out of context. He means like Small arms ammunition, i.e., hey, small arms, you know, 
people keep pistols and stuff like that by their bed. I'm, I'm going to go with that. These weapons are used for personal protection, she added, which is why she is pushing to eliminate the sales tax only for the small arms ammunition and not bigger guns used for hunting or other uses. I really don't care. I mean, I'll take anything I can get. Quote, we have open borders and more than ever, we just don't know who we're going to come across. Tranum said, quote, when we're out shopping, where we're even in our homes, I'm seeing cases where there's home invasions, things like that happening more rapid than I can remember in the past ever seeing it. Folks, I think we need to take a moment and understand we actually have a case here of a politician actually looking out for the needs of their, their constituents. Yes, crime is going up. We see that all over the place. Places that we normally used to associate with being quote unquote safe. If it doesn't, if they don't have gates and armed security, you might not be as safe as before because you're having 10,000 immigrants a day or 10,000 illegals a day crossing the border and being ferried across the nation or union. Sorry. Tram said she filed the bill based on the request from constituents. South Carolina, Tram said should, quote unquote, definitely not pursue gun control laws that she said would make it harder for people to protect themselves. This lady is awesome. Quote, when this specifically, this was specifically just to make sure that people that obviously can legal, own, legally own a firearm have access to it and can be a little bit more affordable. She continued, honestly, I don't believe that we should be taxing a constitutional right. I dig it. I dig it. Good, good for you, lady. This is 100% correct. South Carolina state sales ra uh, sales tax rate is 6%. Dozens of items are exempt from the sales tax in the state, from hearing aids to, you know, ED medication to materials used to assemble missiles. In the past year, another state sales tax exemption was proposed. Feminine hygiene products, including stuff you can read on the screen. Advocates for that proposal argued that those items are medical necessities and should not be taxed in South Carolina. The bill passed the House and remain sitting in the hands of the Senate Finance Committee. Tranim, who is a South Carolina House Freedom Caucus member, said she believes eliminating the tax on small arms ammunition is, quote, a no-brainer, unquote. I believe it is as well. Yet it's not clear whether the General Assembly will choose to make the bill a priority. And then she finished up, I would, quote, I would think it would be easy, unquote. She then continued, but then again, when you have people in Columbia that are campaigning one way, then voting another, it's hard to say, what they'll grab a hold to. If people decide it's a priority, which is beautiful, they have the power, which is beautiful. That's the way it's supposed to be. Folks, if you're in South Carolina or know somebody in South Carolina, call your Congress, call your lawmaker and tell them you need to support this. And I think every red state should follow up on this. Now, of course, some states are a little bit greedier than others. So I don't, I don't even know if this will pass or not. But the fact of the matter is it is a constant. It is a constitutional right. And if you, this is your first time joining me, we're going to go to this thing I like to call the big board. It is a state constitutional right, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. South Carolina has this Article 1, Section 28, well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of the free state, right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And then you can read the rest of it. And it doesn't say, and you get to tax the ammunition. Because that's one thing leftists love to do. Let's just tax their ammunition. Well, we've seen bills in Texas, California, at the federal level. That's one thing. You can't go after the gun, so let's go after the ammunition. So I like to see this. We were very aggressive in 2023, and it was awesome as we expanded out. Permitless carry, open carry, whatever you want to call it. I know Giffords and Brady are running around claiming victories on certain things. Oh, we passed this many bills and we passed this many laws. A lot of those things took place um, in blue states. We need to continue the offensive. We need to continue to push. And we need to continue to expand gun rights across these United States. And I think this is something every red state can get behind. Every red state can get behind tax-free ammunition. I don't even care. Let's let's minimize it. Tax-free on nine and you know, nine mil and you know, nine mil through 45. I'll I'll take that as a win because if we can do that for training ammunition and regular ammunition, that's great. So these are things we need to look at going forward because 2023, we did a great job pushing open and permitless carry. Awesome. This is something I think most states, a lot of states can actually get behind <coughs> going in to 2024 and we can continue our advance on the right to keep and bear arms and keep it where, as I like to say, keep it at the state level. 
The more we keep playing at the state level, the more we keep fighting at the state level, the more we will continue to win. Good gun morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Daily Mag Dump. You're only home for Daily Gun News at the federal, state, and local level. We're moving to weeknights in January, so I'm glad you guys are hanging out with me so far. Please like, subscribe, share. If you're following me on the X, go and give it to you. Uh, follow me there as well, so that way you can uh, watch the show when we go weeknights in, uh, in the new year. Leave me a comment down below. Retweet it, share it, help this channel grow. Because you guys are the only reason it's growing. It ain't because of this face. <laughs> so uh, thank you, everybody, for your support so far. And uh, thank you for making 2023 a really successful year. But I'll talk about that on Friday. That'll be the last official show of 2023. Um, by default, even if I wanted it to be. <laughs> so last, last, like, yeah, last story of the day, ladies and gentlemen. McCluskey won't get his guns back, appeal court says. Now, why am I talking about this story? It's something that as an LTC instructor in the state of Texas, I always talk about um, with my uh, students when we talk about firearms, when we talk about the legal procedure and so forth. I always try to tell them um, price is something you should take into account because when you actually get into the self-defense incident, you're going to lose that gun. Doesn't matter. I know um, a lot of places, a lot of places are not going to give you a pat on the back and say, good for you, and move on. They're they're going to take it as evidence, and you're going to be without that gun for maybe two, three, four years. So the gun you carry, while should be reliable, and we're really lucky. We're in a golden age of concealed carry where guns are both affordable and reliable. Um, or just be ready to grab a backup. Have I mean, most of the people watching this will understand. You should definitely have more than one, just in case. <laughs> Or have a Caltech on you and just toss that. Anyway, from uh, WebsterCountyCitizen.com. Links are in the description box down below for all three stories. Mark McCluskey says he hopes the Missouri Supreme Court will take up his case and rule on it. I mean, you can take a look at that right there. It is it is what it is. If we're looking at how this whole thing is formed and, and looked at. What do I mean? Good question. So the fact of the matter is McCluskey was in the right. I believe he was, especially given the time period of 2020. But he's also, and the crazy thing is, Sheriff, the governor, they all pardon him. But that doesn't mean the legal system has to cooperate. And that's that's a big problem in, in cities as well. I mean, I live in the great Republic of Texas. I have to debate whether I'm going to bring a gun into Austin. I have to debate whether I'm going to carry a gun in Houston or in Dallas. Because if something, first of all, I have to debate whether I want to go there, period. And secondly, I have to debate whether if something goes down, am I willing to lose the firearm there? I I won't tell you if I do or don't, but maybe you can figure it out. Anyway, St. Louis lawyer Mark McCluskey has lost another round in his effort to reclaim firearms. He and his wife agreed to surrender when they pled guilty to misdemeanors in 2021. The Missouri Court of Appeals in St. Louis on Tuesday sided with the lower court judge who last year ruled against returning the guns. Mark and Patricia McCluskey were originally charged with felonies for confronting protesters with firearms in 2020 outside their central West End mansion. Now, of course, that was all politically motivated. We understand who was the person charging them? The district attorney of St. Louis, who was an absolute psycho lefty. Once again, what I'm talking about, the the district attorney of Travis County. Here in Texas, that's where Austin is, you know, uh, Dallas County and and uh, Fort Ben. We are sorry, Fort Collins. We did a story on the sheriff of Fort Collins the other couple of days ago. You got to be aware of the law enforcement in the places you live, which is why sheriffs is such a huge thing you have to vote on, because these are the people enforcing the laws, especially with the uh, district attorneys as well. So. I mean, Patricia might have been, we all agree, Patricia should, you know, the felony charge against her is, is a little bit harder to to justify because she was actually like finger on the trigger pointing at people like gangster. Um, so she was a little tougher than that. Mark, I, he's not as much, but, you know, their entire, um, their, their, uh, their property was threatened, their lives were threatened and under 
we might as well go to the big board. And under Missouri rules, right? Missouri has a very, very well written um, right to keep and bear arms right there. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it'll take me 15 minutes. But it was amended in 2014, Article 1, Section 23, right? They have all of this here. So the fact of the matter is, you could easily see within this writing of the of their Article 1, Section 23 at the state level, which is why I always try to push the state level stuff. Technically, the felonies shouldn't even fit, which is why the governor pardoned them, which is why the, the, the you know, all of these people stepped up and said, yeah, we're not going to really go with the, the, the felony charge you're obviously throwing at them for political reasons. But unfortunately, during the investigative process, which the legal system can stretch out as long as it wants, it's going to be a little harder to do so to, to argue that you need your guns back because they can say, well, it's evidence. Now, the two pled guilty to misdemeanors in June 2020 and agreed to give up their weapons in a case that drew national attention. Governor Mike Parson, a Republican, later pardoned the couple. Yeah, because if you look at the state constitution, there's absolutely no reason they should have felonies. They were, I feel, they were right on the edge, but I feel they were well within Article 1, Section 23, the right of every citizen to keep and bear arms um, in the defense of his home, person, family, and property. It's right there. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't reference state constitutions. They go straight to 2A. Uh, Mark McCluskey then sued to return the two firearms he turned over. Uh, Colt AR-15 and a Brico 380 caliber pistol. Quote, Missouri law is unequivocally unequivocal that a gub gubernatorial pardon obliterates the fact of the conviction, not the fact of the guilt, the appeals court said. What the heck? What does that even mean? We're not talking about, I see this is the whole thing with lawyers. The fact of guilt. I'm sorry, what does fact of guilt mean? McCluskey's guilty plea triggering the gun's forfeiture. Uh, oh, okay. That's the fact of quote unquote guilt. Since McCluskey's guilt remains, it follows that he is not entitled to the return of those weapons. Well, first of all, he's not guilty. And I, I'm going to play, you know, online lawyer. He's not guilty because he falls within this section, whether he pleads it or not. Whether he pleads it or not, Article 1 clears him of this guilt. Uh, Judge James M. Dowd authored the opinion, which was joined by Judge P. Torbitz and Michael S. White. McCluskey said Tuesday he would ask Missouri Supreme Court to review his case. Quote, hopefully the Missouri Supreme Court will take the case and rule on it. So the, the fact is, folks, I always like to cover these things because people think that because uh, they always read stories from like Fox and stuff like that, where somebody shoots an intruder and the cops like slap him on the back and say, good job, bucko, and then just leave. Um, that's not going to be your case. Of course, you should definitely look into something like um, a uh, legal representation. I don't like the word insurance, but legal representation, something like USCCA or US Law Shield or attorneys on retainer or right to bear or something like that um, to, to help you in those ways as well. Uh, Carbon Mike jumping in here. McCluskey should have exercised better muzzle trigger discipline. This is yet another big reason why local politics and local conservative outreach really, really matters. You're correct. That's why I'm saying, uh, like, Patricia really doesn't help the case. Patricia don't help because she was, like, walking up on people with that. Um, I agree with you. That was That's their one thing. If they didn't have those photos of, of both of them kind of reacting in, a, uh, in an impassioned way, uh, and you're right about the trigger, the muzzle discipline, muzzle trigger discipline. That's the thing that really hurts their case. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is we can all agree that local elections matter, especially to us in the gun community. We need to be focused on it more than anybody else because these are the people that are going to prosecute you. These are the people that are going to make your life miserable. Um, but a local politics matter B when you put that gun on your hip, you need to make that decision. Um, I'm, am I a going to use this firearm if I need to? A lot of people need to be asked that question. And B, am I ready to lose this firearm should the actual time come? You know what I mean? I don't care if you Gucci or Glock out. If you have a Gucci Glock for the range and all that kind of fun stuff, cool, man. Just don't carry the Gucci Glock for home defense or conceal carry. 
Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know in the uh, comment section down below if you agree with that. And tell me, like, I don't care. I'm going to carry it anyway. Hey, man, do I'm, I've never want, I, I really try not to tell people what to do. And if that's your case, you do it, man. That's cool. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I just don't do it, which should mean nothing to most of you. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. We go 30 minutes here on the Daily Mag Dump. You're only home for daily gun news at the federal, state, and local level. Keep your eyes out. I got an interview coming up with uh, Mr. Carbon Mike coming soon. And um, I'm very, very excited to be speaking to him. So subscribe on all the platforms. If you're on Twitter, follow me so you can catch on that interview. And uh, we will talk to you on Friday. There's not going to be a show tomorrow. There's going to be a show on Friday. And then Monday, Tuesday, I'm taking New Year's Day off. Tuesday, we go to nights. Uh, so you definitely be subscribed for that. All right, folks. Find me at thearmcatholic.com, first class firearm training with a foundation of Catholic tradition because the two are compatible. I want you all to get armed, get trained, stay safe, stay ready, and God bless.